Greetings, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about concrete over design. That's like how much extra safety factor you have to put on your concrete designs. The strength of concrete is often a critical factor for the design of our structures. So we got to make sure that we get it right. Because of that, we have to put some safety factor on top of our typical design strengths to, again, make sure that we account for variability in, in the materials, in the testing, in the construction. Ultimately, we want this to have a very low chance of our provided strength to be below the design strength. And if we try to provide a certain target strength, then statistics tells us that 50% of the time we'd be below that, and 50% of the time we'd be above that. This whole idea is called the normal distribution. That's how we assume most things in nature vary. We describe this variance, or how precise these things are, by something called a standard deviation. And I'll explain what that is coming up. But basically, the larger the standard deviation, the more variable or wider the distribution is. So I've got a plot here showing strength down on the x-axis, and showing frequency or how, or how often something occurs on the y-axis. And this one, this higher group of data here that comes up and down and over has a lower S or a lower standard deviation than this one. Notice it doesn't go up as high. That means there's not as many times that we're very, very, very close to 4,000. There's more times that we're outside of that. That is what the standard deviation does. It tells us about the variance or how variable some measurement is. And we would love in life to have things with very low standard deviations. Sadly, we don't always get everything we love. We don't always get everything we want doesn't always work out that way. And we have to learn how to take care of it. How the standard deviation works is that within a plus or minus from the mean, that's the average, that's the middle, plus or minus two standard deviations, this covers 95% of the data. That means 95% of the time, only five out of a hundred times will I be outside of this range for that material. And notice this is somewhere around 500 PSI. This is about a thousand PSI swing here. So if I have a very low standard deviation, I'm approximately plus or minus 500 PSI. But in this one, the higher standard deviation, and actually this wider one, is much closer to what you see for concrete in the field. Even though we're designing on average to have 4,000 PSI, it's gonna vary. And it could vary anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000, 95% of the time. Again, that's two standard deviations. That's kind of how it works. Because of this variation, we have to design for a higher strength. We need a safety factor that helps us make sure that we don't run, run into actual trouble. This graph shows exactly how we handle this. If we want to provide 4,000 PSI concrete, then we're going to slide our mean, we're going to slide our design or our target strength over enough so that the probability is very, very, very low. ACI shoots for 1%. There's a, being a 1% chance that we could have something actually not be the strength that we want it to. So let's get some actual definitions here. The design strength, that's the strength needed for the structural design. That's the strength that the structure needs. That comes out from the calculations from whatever you're, you're actually designing, from, from, from those equations. Then the target strength, that's a strength that's higher than the design strength. And this difference between the design and the target is going to be determined by the variance and the results. Again, 
We're gonna slide this over and how far we have to slide it over, how much we have to over design our concrete for is gonna depend on how variable it is, what the standard deviation is. So the larger the variance or the standard deviation, the larger the difference between the design and the target strength. This means that the more variable your practices are, that means if you're not really consistent on how much material you put inside your concrete or how you test it or how you cure it or how you sample it, this is gonna require your safety factor to be larger. This means you're gonna need either a lower water to cement ratio in your mix, you might need higher dosage of admixtures, you actually may need more paste, this may mean more cement. This also can mean, not always, but it can mean a higher cost. More var variation can mean higher costs. That's higher standard deviation would mean higher cost, can mean that. Okay, enough with this theory. Let's get to some numbers. How do we calculate some of these things? How do I find my target strength? Well, if you have lots of experience with a mixture, ACI 318, that's the building code, defines that um, you have at least 30 or more than 30 replicate tests. That means you've made 30 different batches of the concrete. You've tested all 30 of those batches and based off that information, you've determined a mean or an average and a standard deviation. If you have that, then you use these equations. If you're designing for a concrete with greater than 5,000 PSI, then F prime CT, that's your target strength, is going to be, this is your design strength, this is what you wanna get, plus 1.34 times your standard deviation. Another equation, another way to express this, this is, so you would check this, and you, you would check this equation as well, would be F prime C, design strength, plus 0.9 of F prime C, plus 2.33 times the standard deviation. And you are going to use the largest F prime CT for your design. From whichever comes out of these two equations, you'll use the larger one. If your F prime C happens to be less than 5,000 PSI, then you're gonna use this equation. Hey, it's the same one as before. F prime C, your design strength, plus 1.34 times your standard deviation. And you'll also use this equation, your design strength, plus 2.33 times your standard deviation, minus 500 PSI. If you have less than 30 tests, a lot of people don't have 30 tests. So they fall into this category, then you have to multiply the standard deviation, that's S, by an additional modification factor. Let's see what I'm talking about. This is a table, this is the number of tests you have, and this is the modification factor you have to multiply by your standard deviation. This is the idea that you might not have enough tests to really accurately determine your standard deviation. If you have 30 or above, it's one, and if you, as you have less, Notice this number goes up, and you would interpolate in between each one of these values. Now, let's say you have less than 15 tests. You don't know much. You're just getting started. Then you're going to use these equations. If your F prime C is less than 3,000 PSI, you'll use this one. 3,000 to 500, you'll take your design strength plus uh, 1,200 PSI. And if your F prime C is greater than 5,000 PSI, you'll use 1.1 times F prime C plus 700 PSI. Okay, let's work an example problem now. Now, I want you to define the target strength given the following, 4,000 PSI, and my standard deviation is 480 PSI. If I have 35 test results, 35, that means I don't have to make any modifications. I get to just use these two equations. F prime CT is equal to 4,000 PSI plus 1.34 times my standard deviation of 480. 
And that happens to be equal to 46, 43 PSI. Now I've checked my other equation because it may control. F prime CT equals 4,000 plus 2.33 times my standard deviation of 480 minus 500. And this is equal to 4,618 PSI. So I'd use this one. This is the larger one. That's the one. Let's say I had the same situation, but I didn't have as many tests. Let's say I only had 18 tests. 18 times that I'd made the concrete mixture, I'd tested the concrete mixture, and this is my standard deviation. It was the same information before, 4,000 PSI. Standard deviation, 480 PSI. So I'm going to interpolate here because 18 is between 15 and 20. So I'm going to interpolate and get 1.12. That's my modification factor. So I'm going to take 1.12, multiply it by 480, and I get 534 PSI. Now I get to do everything again now with my new modification factor. F prime CT with my new, S, um, my new standard deviation. 4,000 plus 1.34 times 534. Now, why did I need a larger one? It's because I didn't have 30 tests. And that's 47.20 PSI. Now, let's say, let's plug in the other one. 4,000 plus 2.33 times S, which is 534, minus 500. And that's 4740 PSI. Pretty close. That's the one I would use. That's the larger one. Now let's say I didn't have any previous tests. No information. No previous testing information. That's okay. 4,000 plus 1,200 is 5,200 PSI. So in summary, if I had greater than 30 tests, 46, 43. If I have about 18 tests, it's 47, 40. If I have zero tests, I'm starting from scratch, 5,200. If I look at the water to cement ratios I need, notice these are almost the same. So there's some benefit to getting above 30 tests, but not a bunch. But there is quite a bit of benefit of getting to 18 tests. I can drop my water to cement ratio quite a bit. And this could be helpful. This could help me save money. We'll talk more about that coming up. It could, but I have a note over here. If this concrete's going to be exposed, if it's going to be outside, then the durability requirements almost always are going to require your water to cement ratio to be less than 0.45. So even though we, we might calculate we need this water to cement ratio for strength, we may not use it because it may be that another criteria controls. And that's a great lead-in to the next video. Take care.